Hello and welcome to this introductory video in how to change sensors on a multi-ray light. The functionality is exactly the same for the multi-ray or the multi-ray pro series. So the first place to start to change out any sensors on the device and reconfigure it is to change over the back section and then firstly we need to remove the clip. So unscrew the clip from the top. Then we need to remove the rubber boot. Now there's usually some lining screws here, so, but for our purposes I've previously loosened those. So the rubber boot will then pull off the instrument and then we can remove it from the device. We then approach with the sensor and pump assembly, which is on this back section here. So we need to undo these four screws to remove this assembly. Once all four screws have been undone, we can remove this back assembly and you'll see the pump is located on the back here and then we've got the sensors inside the instrument. So as it stands at the moment in this device, we have to have an oxygen sensor, a photoionization detector for volatile organics, a carbon monoxide sensor and an H2S sensor with a blanking plug in this hole. Now, there, although the multi-ray is a very configurable instrument, there are some limitations about what gases you can have together, and equally there are some limitations about what sensors can go and what holes. So this particular top right hole has to run the high-powered high -powered sensors. So in this case, we've got a PID in there, but we want to add an infrared CO2 sensor. Now you can see the lining pins on the bottom of these sensors match, which match with the holes on here. So you can only input an infrared or a PID sensor in this particular position. It will also run a conventional electrochemical sensor if you wish. Now this position is allocated for an LEL, a conventional Pellister LEL sensor, a catalytic bead sensor. We haven't got one of those, so we don't need one at the moment. Um, and because I don't particularly need the H2S sensor, I'm also gonna remove that sensor, and then I'm gonna replace that with a blanking plug. So now we've got a configured instrument for CO2, CO, and oxygen. Now these are all smart sensors, so they have PCBs on the bottom, which carries the calibration information for the sensor itself uh, rather than carrying with the instrument. We would recommend that as soon as you change any configuration um, that you do recalibrate the instrument after that, which we will show you in another video. So to replace the sensor assembly, push it back into position and then screw back up the four screws on the back. Now we need to replace the rubber boot. So to do this, the easiest way is to take it from the front of the instrument, push the instrument through, and then manipulate the rubber boot back over the device, not forgetting to poke through your lanyard grip. Rubber boot's back in position. Now, ordinarily, I would also remove these screws and then retighten it back on to lock this instrument into place at this point. But for our purposes, I'll just replace the clip. And that completes the process. And now we can see the instrument is now reconfigured from a instrument with PID, O2, CO, and H2S to an instrument that now runs CO2, CO, and oxygen. We could equally offer NO2 and NO sensors as well um, to look at uh, something for more diesel fume surveys, as an example. But there's many different applications for this device um, and a lot of different things we can do. So we can see the sensors are all installed and ready to go. We hope you found this information useful. Should you require any further assistance or technical support, feel free to call us on 01489 326 031 or outside normal working hours, call us on 07951 854 824 or alternatively, you can visit our website anytime at www.safetymonitors.co.uk. Thanks for listening. Thank you.